Fox Sports. We are Baltimore. We are Ohio. Francisco Lindor provided a spark last night at Wrigley Field, and the Indians shut out the Cubs behind a dazzling all-around performance by Trevor Bauer. Now the two teams tangle at Progressive Field as Lindor makes his home debut. The Cubbies will get a look at Sean Markham, who loves facing teams from the Windy City. Put them up, put them up. The Tribe and the Cubs are next on Sports Time Ohio. After their brief road trip to the Motor City and the Windy City, the Indians return home to the shores of Lake Erie to take on the Chicago Cubs as interleague play continues tonight here at Progressive Field. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Banning. What we got to see on that last road trip was Francisco Lindor. And, Rick, he's already checking off all of his first. First hit, first run, first stolen base, first RBI. He's getting them all out of the way. You know, it's fun. He got the first hit in Detroit. As he, you know, he rounded first base, he's going to end up falling. But in his first start yesterday, it was something special because he hit in the number two hole, and he gets an RBI. And then after that, he gets a stolen base. And I think it's a perfect spot for him. Hit between Kipnis and Brantley. This is going to get this young man some pitches. If he can just stay there and try and be himself and not do too much, I think it's a very good spot for him. And it creates a little excitement. Now making his first home start here tonight. It should be a lot of fun for him. Sean Markham will get the start for the Tribe on the Hill tonight. And he's coming off his best performance as an Indian. Seven two-hit shutout innings against Seattle. He was very locked in. He had good break. He had good control, spotting his fastball. But I don't know what it is about the Chicago teams, but the White Sox and the Cubs, he's been brilliant in his career against both those clubs. He's pitched very good in Chicago, although this one is going to come at home. But you look at his record, 6-0 and in Chicago. But 4-1 and against the Cubbies, 5-0 and against the White Sox. Let it be. If he can come back and do the same thing he did in his last start, the Indians need that to get started out right on an eight-game homestand. Yeah, the Indians definitely have to get things turned around here at Progressive Field. We'll see if they can do that tonight in the series opener against the Chicago Cubs. When we come back, Andre Knott joins us to talk about the Tribe's new look lineup. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
Suns take a three to nothing lead. And he's got a line drive single into center field. His first major league hit. Lindor will drive home Kipnis. And Lindor with his first stolen base. The Indians wipe out the Cubs here by a final score of six to nothing. Same two teams, different venue as we greet you tonight from Progressive Field, Indians and Cubs with another two-game series that begins tonight here with American League rules. So we're back to the DH. But the Indians lineup, very similar to what we saw last night. And as we go down to Andre Knott, I know Terry Francona said he wasn't married to it, but so far, so good. So far, so good. And we all know marriages work differently no matter whose house that they are in. But the whole thing with Carlos Santana and Francisco Lindor, manager Terry Francona wants these guys to be comfortable in their roles. And he said the one thing about Santana in the two-hole, he's not your normal two-hole hitter, and they didn't want to change him. They didn't ask him to bunt. They didn't ask him to hit behind guys. They think with Lindor he can do all of those things, and it'll be a comfort issue for him because he's done those things throughout his career. But when you look at Santana, comes up with the big home run last night. Some numbers tell you that maybe cleanup is where he should be. He batted 196 with a 336 on base percentage as a two-hole hitter with four home runs. As a cleanup hitter this year so far, hitting 253 with a 429 on base percentage with four home runs and more RBIs. There's no marriage that's been told that it has to stay this way. But if both guys can really take off in these roles, I think they'll stay there for a very long time. Yeah, I, I certainly like Lindor in the number two hole much better than Santana. No question about it because when Kipnis getting on base at the rate he is and you've got Brantley behind you, this young man's going to get some fastballs to hit. I like that a lot, and I hope he gets comfortable in that spot. And I'm not worried about the number four hole because you can move anybody you want there. Ned Carlos Santana with eight home runs has certainly proven in the past that, you know, he can get on a run where – Home runs tend to come in bunches with big hitters like that. And, uh, you know, again, it's not a perfect lineup. And, you know, Terry Francona's had to shuffle pieces and move guys yeah. around. You know what I like? If Moss gets hot and he's hitting the long ball, you can put him fourth. You know, move sure. Santana fifth. You know, you, you've got your pieces you can mix and you match. If you've got your number one, two, and three hitters in place. That will be a lot easier for that man to make out a lineup card. Well, let's take a look at our window systems game time temperature. A little warmer than what we had last night in Chicago. 71 degrees at game time. <laughs> Breeze will be blowing in, and it looks like it'll be carrying out toward left field slightly. So I think the ball hit to center, to right center, is going to get knocked down. Ball hit to left. Might get pushed toward the foul pole a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how it plays here tonight. Sean Markham going to make the start for Cleveland. So Yoshi Wada will go for Chicago. He's, He's a left-hander. And here comes Sean Markham, the righty, to lead the Tribe out onto the field. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for Joe Madden's Cubs, brought to you by Toyota. Dexter Fowler, switch hitter, will lead things off. Anthony Rizzo with 11 home runs on the air, bat second. Chris Bryant has hit in 12 consecutive games now. He will bat third. Chris Coughlin gets the start in the cleanup role after they had a late change in their lineup, scratching Miguel Montero, who's out with some back issues. Starlin Castro will bat fifth. Kyle Schwarber, the Middletown, Ohio product, gets the start at DH. His first big league start, he'll bat sixth. Chris Denorfia in right field hitting seventh. David Ross, the catcher, bats eighth. Addison Russell will hit ninth. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher will be 33-year-old Sean Markham, making his sixth start of the year tonight, coming off a dandy against the Seattle Mariners where he pitched seven innings, gave up just two hits. Didn't walk anybody, had five strikeouts. He left bleeding that game six to nothing, and he got win number three on the season. He has very good numbers against the Cubbies in his career, four and one. 393 ERA, although, you know, it's got to go back a little while. But let's set that defense uh, behind Markham tonight. It's brought to you by Chrysler. It's a Avilas gets a start in left field. Brantley is in center. Moss over and right. Urshela at third. Lindor at short. Kipnis at second. Santana at first with Gomes doing the catching. Same umpiring crew that we had in Chicago. Jerry Davis, the crew chief, will have the plate tonight. Tony Randazzo is at first. Will Little 
At second, Phil Cuzzy down at third. Cuzzy, the third base umpire, ejected multiple bogeys last night. Throughout Michael Bourne of the Indians and Miguel Montero of the Cubs. Both for arguing balls and strikes. First pitch of the night for Markham in there. Strike one to Dexter Fowler. He was 0 for 3 last night in Chicago against the Tribe with one walk. Pitch outside. And a count evens at 1 and 1. Both teams arrived in Cleveland by the time they got to their home or hotel. It was about 3 a.m. So both teams kind of had a late arrival here to the ballpark. It was sort of a, hey, just get here, you know, late afternoon, be ready to dress and just go. That was that, that's been the norm for us this year. It's been 3 a.m. coming home the last three or four trips. One ball, two strikes to count. Just missed outside. Cubs begin the night. 34 wins, 28 losses. Third place, eight games back of St. Louis in the NL Central. Indians 30 and 33, seven games back of Kansas City in the Central. Indians are currently in fourth place. Joe Madden in his first year at the helm of the Chicago Cubs. They've played very well to this point. A lot of excitement in the Windy City. 3-2 pitches, high ball four. That's something that Markham did not do in his last start. He did not right. walk a single batter. Yeah, and he was ahead of Fowler as well. Look at the keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. How Markham does against these Cub left-handers will be key for sure. And we'll see what the Indians can do with the new top of their lineup. Because of the Cubs' left-handed bats, in particular Rizzo and Coughlin, and even Chris Bryant, who's a right-handed hitter, but will take the ball to all fields. Tom Boschenek says that 54 of the Cubs' 59 home runs this year have been hit against right-handed pitching. That's a lot. Boy, now you got me curious. i got to look at a couple of numbers here. Well, what's interesting is that you would almost think they'd be a left-handed dominant lineup to have that kind of disparity. Well, they're 5-4 and four against left-handed starters this year. 3-0 and oh at home, 2-4 and four on the road, but that isn't a, a whole lot of left-handers no. that they've faced to uh -uh. this point, so there must not be a whole lot in the National League. They're all in the American League. <laughs> Markham misses outside ball one to Rizzo. He was 0-3 for 3 last night with a walk. Boy, Trevor Bauer was just so good again last night. The road warrior. Yeah, he was lights out. Another seven innings for Bauer. And Markham is missing all over the place here early. He's thrown eight He's, pitches and only six or only two of them have yeah, been strikes. Uh, the, the, the looks like he's out of whack somehow, some way. Doesn't feel comfortable. He's normally a strike throwing machine. Well, this is not good. 3-0. and You know, he got the first strike on Fowler, and it looked a little low to me. Let's check the, uh, his last pitch out on the Nissan pitch tracker. But you see he has a lot of movement on that pitch right there, and that thing did take off. It was outside. And this guy will swing 3-0. and So be careful if you throw the fastball. Locate it. Smashed foul. He was aggressive, and he pulled it the way you're supposed to. Oh, 
Nicely done, young man. Three balls and a strike. With the speedy Dexter Fowler at first. Another toss to first, and Fowler back with a dive. Well, if you're Santana, I know it may not be that close, but you still have to bring it back and try and tag the guy that's coming back. Line drive caught by Kipnis. Fowler falls down, double play. How about that one? Well, Rizzo hit it hard, but Kipnis stole it from him. And then once Fowler spun his wheels and went down, it was an easy double play. Boy, that's just what Markham needed. This ball right on the nose, and you would expect that when you're behind in the count. Rizzo hits it about as hard as you can. Kipnis climbs the elevator to the top, makes the play. Fowler falls down, and it's an easy double play. Two away now for Chris Bryant. Is that classified as a base running mistake? You freeze on a line drive, well, or is that a tough one to read? You know, 3-1 count, he probably felt that that ball was going to get over the head of Kipnis. That's a tough one to read. And on first inning, you're an aggressive guy like Fowler. He wasn't running on the pitch, but, you know, you see that line drive, and you're thinking, here I go. And you take one step, and you're, you're pretty much done. At that first inning of the game, it's hard to say that's a yeah. mistake. Later in the game, when their score is tied, or you, you, you can't get doubled off, it would be different. Out off the end of the bat. You know, when you're on the field, and you're down there, and you're running the bases, and you see that line drive, your initial reaction is to take off. I mean, it's easy. But Kipnis went up and made a really good play. Big shift on the left side of the Indians infield. They've got Lindor pulled around or shell a guard in the line. You see Kipnis shading him up the middle. But the outfield plays him pretty much straight up because Bryant will hit to all fields when he drives the ball. Popped him up here. Will this get him out of the inning? Santana, Santana. comes screaming in. He's got it. And the inning is over. Indians coming to bat when we come back.
Terry Francona starting lineup for the Indians tonight brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Jason Kipnis in the leadoff spot. He's hitting 20 straight here at home. 11 in a row overall. Francisco Lindor, that's behind him. Brantley third. Carlos Santana cleanup. Rayburn Gomes follow him. Brandon Moss, left-handed bat, is seventh. And Giovanni Urshela and Mike Avilas. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher is Suyoshi Wada, who's coming off his uh, career-low three innings in his start. Uh, against the Cubs, but they did beat Cincinnati in that ball game. He's gone three innings in his last start, three and two-thirds innings to start before that. Not overpowering a left-hander. He has to control the fastball, command it, and then get to his off-speed pitches. At least according to the Indians' notes, no Indians hitter has ever faced him before, so I'm curious to see, Rick, how that plays in tonight's game. Well, you'll probably see these guys take a few pitches that first time through the lineup and see what he has. Check that fastball if it has movement on it, where he likes to throw it, what kind of breaking ball he has that first time through. He's not overpowering at all. Not very big either at 5'11", but... 87-mile-an-hour piece of cheese right there. You know, a lot lot of times you see left-handers... You don't see many right-handed starters at 5'10", 5'11". Right. Strikes out Kipnis, one away. Let's get on to Andre Nadu who has more on Wada and how he matches up against the Indians lineup. Wada's coming off a tough start, and when Joe Madden was asked, is this a big start for Wada, considering how bad he's been the last two times out, he laughed, and he says, actually... I think Wada matches up very well against the top of the Indians order. Now, I haven't heard a lot of managers say anything like that, but he stuck to it. He goes, I think he can keep them off balance, and he thinks they're a perfect match against some of the guys the Indians have in the top four or five of their batting order. Okay, it'll be good to, to see after that first time they get a look at him, see what happens that second time through. Francisco Lindor takes... He, you know, he was messing around a lot in his last start, from what I understand, as far as not using his fastball. We'll see how much he uses it that first time through the lineup because that's going to set everything else up. And they say he can be a little bit sneaky. I snuck that one in on Lindor, and it's one ball, two strikes. A little bit low, two and two. Lindor, two for five last night with his first big league RBI for stolen base, first run scored. And he's out looking. Got yeah, a low fastball. Let's check out the Cubs' uh, defense brought to you by Chrysler behind Wada tonight. Coglin and left, Fowler in center, Denorfi and right. Ryan at third, Castro at short, Russell at second, Rizzo at first, Ross doing the catching. Michael Brantley. One for three last night, double, run batted in. Wada this year is making his sixth start. That first time through the lineup so far, hitters are hitting 238. But it goes up 100 points. That second time they go through, it goes mm. to 333. Well, the one thing we've seen already really is locating the ball at the knees or just below, right. down in the strike zone, which is where he wants to be, obviously. Well, here's a guy that's going to make him work anyway. And, you know, when you've never faced a pitcher before, you almost want to pick up that slot where he's releasing the ball from. You know, he has a, a typical little hesitation in that delivery, so you want to make sure you know where it's coming out of. Missed in off the plate, and it's 3-1. and one. 
with Carlos Santana due next. Up the middle, and it was all it was cut off by Castro, but he didn't come up with it cleanly. And Brantley is aboard with two down here in the first inning. I don't know if Castro took his eye off of it, but uh, it's a play that he should have made. He was coming across at the end. Brantley didn't get a very good jump out of the batter's box, and he's in second base territory. He was looking at first base. He took his eye off of it. They give him a hit. They, That's very kind. According to the scoreboard, yes. An infield single for Brantley. Very kind. And he'll take it, I'm sure. Well, last night there were two outs in the first inning when Brantley and Santana both walked. And that got Brandon Moss ultimately to the plate in that first inning. The Indians did not score. But here again, tonight, same scenario. First two are out. Brantley's aboard. Now Santana looks at ball one. Carlos last night had one of those games that you wonder if that is a game that could get him going at the plate. He went two for three with a double and homer, but he also drew two walks. I mean, you can almost book him for a walk a night. Yeah. But when he gets a couple of walks and a couple of big hits like that and driving in runs, you wonder if that's the combination that well, his three-run home run is the one that got the Indians going last night with two outs, and they, they had three runs on one hit. So that, that's what got them going. They were able to add on. They come back in the fifth, the seventh, the ninth. You just like to see the Indians get an, a, a base hit with a runner in scoring position early in the game. Santana looked like he was taking all the way there, 3-0. and This was the home run at Wrigley last night, a high fastball of Jake Arrieta. And he sent it in the front row of the bleachers for a three-run homer. And the Indians never looked back. That's up high, ball four. So second night in a row, Santana has drawn a first-inning walk. Two on, two out, and Ryan Rayburn will be the batter. Tonight's game, we're participating in the home run challenge once again. Every Indian's home run in this game raises $12,500 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. Ryan Rayburn. Rayburn on the year, a 313 batting average against the left handed pitchers. Yeah, he's been very good. There and there's a line drive base hit into left field. Brantley coming around third will try to score. Coglin's throw to the plate is in plenty of time, and he's out to end the inning. So the Indians get a couple of hits. They leave a couple as Brantley is thrown out at the plate to end the bottom of the first. No score in Cleveland.
We go to the second inning. Here's out of the bottom of the first inning with Brantley on second base, coming around third. He's around third just as the ball was getting to the left fielder Coughlin. He made a good throw to get him. Yes, he did. A one hop seed. And that, you got to send him right there because he was getting the ball right when Michael was at third base. The guy made a good throw. He wasn't that deep either. And Rayburn hit that ball pretty hard, but he, they got a hit with a base, uh, you know, runner in scoring position. And he made a good throw. I have no problem with him sending him. Chris Coglin leads off for the Cubs here in the second inning. Coglin moved up in the lineup when Montero was scratched with the lower back issue. Coglin, when he has batted fourth this year, has been productive, going six for 14 with a home run. The former rookie of the year pops one in the air. Right field near the line, and it's called off, and Miss Moss couldn't get there. Well, then he shouldn't have called him off because Kipnis had it. That's his fault. It looked like he called him off, kept his back off. That ball was up there a long time, and somebody could have been there to catch it. And you can see they're, they're communicating right now. Kipnis was there. He's there. He's there. Let's see if Ga or, uh, Moss comes out and calls it, and he never gets to the ball. So Kipnis could have had well, it. You see Kipnis peeled off, so he heard somebody. Well, Assuming it I had to be Moss. Yeah, I don't know who Santana can't call it. He was he's running backwards. That's just a communication breakdown there. Curveball missed outside. Two and two. Let's see if we can see him calling for it. You see, he's calling for it right now. I got it. I got it, but he never got there. And then oh I don't have it. Yeah. Right. Hey, that that happens. I got it. I got it. Uh no, I don't. Got a piece, did Coughlin. He stays alive. And if an outfielder can get to the ball, it's his job to call him off. He just couldn't get to it. The 2-2. Two -two. Coglin, then Starlin Castro and Kyle Schwarber here in the first or in the uh, second inning for Chicago. And a pop up foul just, out of play. This keeps following them off, staying alive. Another foul back. A nice off-speed pitch, a slow one, and he still gets a piece of that. Already eight pitches in the at-bat. Line drive, base hit in the right field. So Markham really had to work. He had him out. They couldn't uh, put that one pitch away. And the next thing you know, he fouls off a lot more. He really made Markham work here. And then he gets a change up to his liking off the end of the bat, lines it into right field. So the first hit for the Cubbies. And that will bring up Starlin Castro. Who was 0 for 3 last night against the Tribe with a walk. And an off-speed pitch in for a strike.
Keeping them close. You look at Markham and he too. That first time through the lineup against a team. They hit just 157. That second time they go through it's up to 300. But he's been very good with runners in scoring position. Just 2 for 17 on the year. Swung out and missed at the off speed pitch. And it's quickly 0-2. And he's been very good against right-handers. You'll see the breaking ball coming in. Excellent spot. Started away. Disappears for a ball. But you get the swing and miss. Popped him up. Kipnis calls for this one. <laughs> I bet he takes this one. And he makes the catch. One down. Our Levin Furniture Player Profile is on Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber out of Middletown High School. He's a really good football player. Went to Indiana and became a tremendous power-hitting catcher. Cubs really like his bat. He's still a work in progress behind the plate. They really have done a complete makeover on him as a catcher. And he said, hey, when I was in college, it was basically just catch the ball. And the umpires would call it over the plate and four inches off the plate. But he said now in the professional ranks... If you don't make that bottom of the zone pitch a strike or if you drag your glove out of the zone, the pitcher is not happy with you. So they've really reworked all of his mechanics behind the plate. And he hits that ball hard. Look out. Now, that's a big kid, too, when you talk about a catcher. 230, 240 pounds. He was a middle linebacker when he was in high school. And yes. he said, you know. There's a lot of similarities when you're a middle linebacker. You're making all the calls on the field defensively. And he said, when you're the catcher, you're in the middle of the field and you're making all the calls. He just hit that ball like a middle linebacker. Now they say he has great power. And he's only up here through Sunday. Oh, it gets by Santana and down the line it goes. Coughlin coming into third. They're going to wave him home. Moss is throw to Kipnis. And that's all the... No play as the Cubs score and take the lead. Kyle Schwarber gets his first major league hit. I'm assuming it's going to be a hit. We'll have to wait, see what the score is determined. I, I don't. I can't believe that. Santana's got to catch that ball, doesn't he? He put, he just brought his glove oh, yeah. up too quickly. It sure looked like it was right there. I mean, that ball, that's a ground ball. Catch it. That's a, well, that's that can't error. be a that's hit. That's an error. I mean, seriously, it rolls down. It's his mistake. He's there. He catches it. He's got every opportunity. He just short-armed it. So it gets down. If they're going to give him a triple on that, they're, it's generous today. So that's a triple and RBI. Now well, they score it. Cubs going to take the lead. So his first major league hit is a triple. Don't be surprised if that's changed. Well, nice block by Gomes. Well, I feel bad for the kid if it is. Well, I do too. But you know what? The, it was the right call. Santana should have caught the ball, stepped on first, and threw to second. Infield in now with Schwarber at third base. One ball, one strike. Swing and a miss, and Denorfia in the hole, a ball and two strikes. Nice. 
Line to left. I'm going to break Base the ball. hit. Two nothing Cubs. Denorfia. He's headed to second base with a double. Well, he wanted to go and throw him that slow hook. He did, but he it stayed upstairs for Sean Markham and Denorfia hits a mistake. There you'll have it right there. Stayed back. It's just the location of the pitch. It's not where Sean wanted it. So the Cubbies put a two spot on the board. Still have a runner in scoring position with just one out. David Ross getting the start behind the plate tonight and showed bunt. Well, on Sunday night, David Ross doubled and scored the game-tying run in the seventh inning. That was his first run scored as a member of the Cubs. Takes a strike, it's two and one. Earlier this year, Ross made his uh, pitching debut on May the 9th in Milwaukee and retired oh, yeah. the side in order in the eighth inning. No kidding. To third. Nice backhanded pick by Urshela, and he'll throw out the Cubs catcher. Two down. Sparkling defensive play turned in by Urshela. Yeah, nice play. I, I like he didn't rush. He got up. He knew he had plenty of time. You've got the catcher, Ross, running. But he goes to his backhanded side. Make sure you catch it first. And look, he had plenty of time. Look the runner back. And a nice strong throw across the diamond. Great play. That is two outs now. And the reason I mentioned that about Ross making his uh, professional pitching debut, I saw where it was uh guy was briefly with the Indians. Uh, uh, Jeff Francoeur. Gave up oh, the yeah, eighth Frenchy? home run uh, in that crazy game. Oh, to Baltimore? Yeah. Okay, I saw there were a lot of players that were pitching, yeah. and, and yes, throughout baseball yesterday. I think he was the one who gave up the last home run. He threw 48 pitches, Murph tells me. The 1 0. A little bit low to Addison Russell. Down low. Well, Markham's had to throw a lot of extra pitches in this inning. Unfortunately, the defense hasn't been there behind him in the inning. And that's why the Cubs have two runs on the board. The leadoff signal, single, Coglin should have been out. Fly ball, it should have been caught. And then the triple by Schwarber, another play that Santana should have made. Three balls and a strike. And you can see uh, Joe Madden lets some of those uh, guys swing three and zero. That's the second three zero swing we've seen today. Bryant, I can see the number nine hitter. It doesn't matter. He gave him the green light. Deep left. Avila's looking up, and it is long gone. Addison Russell with his fifth home run of the year, and the Cubs with a four spot here in the second.
Eighth home run given up by Sean Markham. The fifth home run hit by Russell. And it's a big inning for the Cubs. Upstairs. And he knew it. Just stay fair. Indians bullpen about to get busy. Now he was having trouble in the first inning. And the double play sort of rescued him from potentially an ugly right. inning because remember he walked Fowler and he was behind Rizzo. Was it three and oh? Yeah. Yes, he was. And he fouled off a couple of the balls. 3 0 pitch and he lined a three one pitch into Kippis. He, yeah. He's been unsettled. This inning is on the defense a little bit too. Even though he should have been out of it, it turns into a, a, a big inning with four. Because the leadoff single, there's the play that got under the glove of Santana. That's a play that should have been caught. At least you get it and step on first. To me, that's a double play. You step on first, you throw to second. Yep. You had plenty of time. And the inning's over. And they give him a triple. And then the, the inning would be over. But even if that's not a double play, they, they had a chance to get out of it. That ball's blistered. And Moss over to cut it off. It's just a matter of how quickly they can get Haggard on loose. He's trying to get ready in a hurry. Anthony Rizzo, who lined into that double play in the first. A little bit outside, ball one. Now he's, uh, yeah, he's been struggling all night long. You don't normally see him out there. Here in the second inning, two outs and 46 pitches. They've hit for the cycle in this inning. Single, double, triple, and a homer. And they have another single to, to go at it. Gomes blocked it, and Fowler never picked it up, so he's still standing at first. Well, once you're, and this guy can run, but if you don't pick it up and you just, he's flat-footed, he, he didn't really get a secondary lead. By the time you pick it up, it's too late to start. Three one pitch. There's a long drive to deep right field and it went, it's not coming back. Two run homer by Anthony Rizzo on a three run a three one pitch. And a six run second for Chicago. Second straight time, down and in, and look at that. You talk about lift and separate. It's exactly what he did, and I mean, he hit a bomb for Rizzo, his 12th. It's an Adrian Beltre move, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, uh, down to the one knee. One ball, one strike. Markham just looks completely disheveled tonight. 
Gets a swing and a miss there. It's one and two. Yeah, I, I agree. He did from the first inning, and he's coming off his best start. Yeah. Chris Bryant fouled out to end the first inning. There's the 2-2. That's hit a long way. Left field on the run. Oh, and a backhanded catch by Mike Avilas. He hangs on, and the inning is over. Fine running catch by Avilas to end the inning. But Santana's misplay opens the floodgates, and the Cubs pour in. Get live Indians baseball all season long with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Big turnaround in that first inning. Indians get their runner thrown out at home plate. The next time they get a chance to come hit, they're down six. And Jan Gomes leading off looks at ball one. Two balls, no strikes. And a strike over the outside edge, two and one. What the Indians need now is a kind of game that talked about before what Baltimore did last night. And I was looking at that 22 times in Major League Baseball. A team has hit eight home runs in a game. I remember one time when uh, I was sitting in Cleveland, the Brewers hit eight against us. It might have been back in the late 70s, maybe 1980, right around there. Is it on there? You know what? Um... No, but the Indians did it against Milwaukee after your playing days were over. 1997, the Tribe went to uh, 
Old County Stadium, and Matt, Matt Williams, Williams had three. three. And he hit two to the warning track, if I remember right. But uh, they hit an eight in all in that game. And um, the other one that w you, I think you and I were both there. I was doing radio at the time. Seattle? When they went to Seattle, and, I, I mean, remember. Victor hit three home runs. I remember Seattle. Uh, that was I was coming next. Jan Gomes hits it hard, but just, just foul. So it's it's only happened 22 times. Yeah, and you know what I didn't realize? I went and looked up that Indians game in Seattle when they hit the eight home runs. They had four in the ninth inning. Oh my! And it was already Any insult to injury. Yeah, it was already 13 to three. Yeah, Broussard, Victor, Hafner, Garrett all went deep in Ouch. the ninth. Now the 2-2 to Gomes. Strikes him out. Third K for Wada, one down here in the second. Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. And entering tonight's game since 2011, interleague play. Wow. Tribe's really done a nice job. Yeah, I'll say. Well, they have their work cut out for them tonight. To come back. They certainly have time, but they better throw zeros on the board the rest of the way. Brandon Moss. Last night in Chicago, he went 0 for 3, but did walk twice. Hit hard, but from the outfield grass, and throw him out. That's Bryant, the third baseman over there with that shift on. Two down. We saw 5-1 yesterday up in Chicago where Bryant was over in the hole, and the pitcher had to cover after Rizzo dove for the ball. Now you get a 5-3. Moss hit that ball pretty well. Got a pitch up in the zone. Giovanni Urshela. He had a hit in four trips last night at Wrigley. Fouled right back. Like his hand came off the bat on that swing. Bottom hand. Pulled his hands in, but can't keep it fair. It's fouled down the left side. Time out. And Urshela does. What'd you, you got a pipeline right yeah, down there? Yeah, well, he's been he was standing there too long. He was waiting and holding and holding and say no. He, he didn't like the sign that Ross was giving down there, so step out. Fouled off. Good at bat here for Giovanni Urshela. Down to the count. Want to stay alive.
Wada lets it fly, and it's too low. And a good eye. Now he got him to chase one. Rolls it to third. Nice play by Bryant. Indians go one, two, three. And the Cubs are leading it six to nothing. Short night for Sean Markham, who goes just two innings, and the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen will be for left-hander Nick Hagedon, who comes on here in third. Markham went two innings and allowed six runs. Chris Coughlin, lefty-lefty matchup, looks at a fastball up high. Out of play. Again, hang it on up and in with that fastball. It gets your attention. Well, coming back with another fastball. Let's see if he can throw one away for a strike. Broke his bat in the hole. Base hit. Second hit for Coglin tonight, and he's led off the last two innings with a single. Let's get on to Andre Knott, who has more on Joe Madden and the youth movement he's leading in Chicago. Well, he took this job, Matt, knowing that there was a lot of youth on this ball club, and he was going to have to work with it. And he said there's definitely 
a Cubs way of doing things when they draft these guys and how they treat each other and how they go about doing things. But he wants to give these guys confidence. He wants them to believe in themselves. And we've already seen tonight two of those young players have gotten the green light with the 3-0 count. He says the only problem he's had is some of them don't make the routine play when he needs them to. But he knew this was going to be a work in progress. But he said looking at the talent, he enjoys the guys they've drafted and he's enjoying help these guys get to where they can get as they go along well that's some of the best young talent and they're they're talking about the position players per se when you look at the cubs a lot of great young players you look at the mets on the other hand they have the great young pitchers that are coming up and it's it's interesting how you you go ahead and build it and do it the cubs way they have a lot of talent and it does take a little time to let it develop but they went out and they signed, signed John Lester. He's, got, he, you know, for the big boy. And it all comes back to how good is their pitching going to be. Yeah. Because they've got a couple of young prospects. Soler, who's on the DL, he can hit the ball out of sight. But I'll tell you what, these guys are going to be able to score some runs. They're going to be fun to watch. Not that they already aren't. Castro, what's he, 25 years old, and he's been there for about five years. <laughs> he's the old man of this group, I mean, huh? he really is. When you look at it, they're, they're mid-20s, which is uh, great to see. Brian's 23. You got Rizzo, who's been around a little bit. He's, he's in his mid-20s. They've got some good young players. Well, topper up the third base line stays it's fair. N- not the Indians' night tonight because he made a good pitch right there, and they topped it. He made a good pitch. The pitch before that, Coglin breaks his bat, gets a base hit. Right now, nothing going the Indians' way. I mean, he, he made a great pitch. And you, the best thing he could have done is maybe let it go foul, but he picked it up. That's the only chance you had because he wasn't going to get him. Now, whether it rolled foul, probably wouldn't have. It would have stayed fair. Two on and nobody out for Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber was awarded a triple his first time up. And he yanks that one into right field. That's a pure base hit. Coming around third, Coughlin will try to score. The throw cut off. 7-0 Chicago on three straight singles to open the third. We can see why the Cubs like Schwarber. This kid hasn't played a day at AAA yet. He went from AA right here to the big leagues. And he has swung the bat with authority here tonight. Did you see him pull the hands in? And, I mean, he didn't hit that ball all that well, but, I mean, he muscled it into right field and that's a strong young man right there i know why they wanted to bring him up in dh and they know he can swing Mm -hmm. he can swing it and so there's three more hits the cubs already we're in the third inning they have nine hits seven runs chris denorfia doubled in a run and scored in the second mentioned before that Kyle Schwarber was a very good football player in high school for Middletown the Middies and the last football game that he played in was a playoff game against Braxton Miller who was on his way to Ohio State and even though Kyle Schwarber led everybody in tackles on that night he had 14 tackles in the ball game and they, he held Braxton Miller in check. Miller uh, was held that night to just 60 yards passing, 46 on the ground. But uh, Wayne was able to topple Middletown and end the season with a 21-0 win in that playoff game. 
Terry Francona's made a move to the bullpen. On out and celebrate with members of the 1995 AL championship team that'll take place Friday night the Indians are going to host the Tampa Bay Rays and you're going to enjoy dollar dogs there's post-game fireworks uh, it'll be a good weekend celebrating 20 years since the uh, championship team of the Indians you can go to Indians.com for your ticket details a lot will be going on around the ballpark this weekend Ryan Webb coming on for the 15th time. It was quick to get uh, Hagenon out of there, wasn't it? He in faced three hitters, and he's gone. Yeah, three batters. Good night. Ryan Webb will face the bottom third now. Right-handed hitters, Denorfia, Ross, and Russell. As you said, though, it's kind of a... I mean, the last hit was solid, but the first two... I mean, Coglin breaks his bat and it's perfectly placed. Castro tops yeah, one and it it's, just stops. It's, sometimes that's how it goes. And it, to me, it, it's been that way all night long. You look at the second inning when they put their six on, on the board. You know, there was a ball that should have been caught. It wasn't. It, it goes as no play. A ball that should have been made. It goes as a triple. Um, it's just been one of those nights. And it looks like it's almost over, too. Does not look good. 2-1 pitch. 3-1. and one. Hit well, left center field. That's going to carry all the way over the fence. Holy smokes, DeNorfia clobbers a three-run homer. And the Cubs just pouring it on, lead it 10 to nothing. You know, that ball was a line shot out of wow. here. DeNorfia. I thought it was going to hit off the wall, and it just kept rising. He gets his first home run. You hit a ball like that, and you only have one? He's been swinging the bat, especially against right-handers. He got a sinker down and in. And I mean just hit a ball out of here. So the first four hitters here in the third inning, three singles and a three-run homer. And it's a 10-0 ball game. Ouch. So 57 of the Cubs, 62 home runs now have come off right-handed pitchers. Two two-runners and a three-runner. That'll put some crooked numbers up on the board, and it's batting practice now. 
That hits near the base of the wall. Ross, big wide turn, but he'll have to hold as he turns and gets back to first with a long single. It's already the fifth straight hit in the inning. They have 11 hits. And this is top of the third with nobody out. Look at that breaking ball. That stayed middle in, and uh, Ross turns on it. Goes. He was thinking double. Michael Villas did a nice job of just playing it off the wall, and watch how late he stops. He's halfway. He's got to put on the brakes and go back. Look, they're all smiling at the old father time they're catching. High pop, right field, Moss. First out of the inning. So we go to the top of the order, and Dexter Fowler, who has walked, singled, and scored a run. Going to have to break out some good material tonight. There's just about out of it. <laughs> you can't be. It's only the third inning. Swung on and missed. They have to go to the old mailbag. <laughs> We're going to need a bottle of Vivran before yeah. long. No balls, two strikes. Ryan Webb has thrown virtually all strikes, seven out of eight. Well, you talked about the lopsided games yesterday. Baltimore yeah. having that big day. Baltimore 19 to three. Over Philadelphia, Washington 16 to four over Tampa, and the Yankees got wiped out by the Marlins, right? Uh, yes, 12 to two. Here's our T-Mobile game changer. Ten homers, ten steals. Big well, Anthony Rizzo. How about Big Paul Goldschmidt? Yeah. Those are two of the biggest guys in the league, and they can both run pretty well. Both first basemen, both uh, very good players. And, you know, we had a chance to see Springer, but that was early. Upton again. He has his 13 and 13. You know, we're just, this guy's got a sweet swing, doesn't he? Moss tried to come in and get the hop, and it olayed it right by him. And then the second base is Rizzo. Second and third with two down here in the third inning. I think Moss came running in hard like he was going to be able to make the catch. And he realized too late he wasn't going to be able to make the catch. Yeah, he came in. It was a little bit off the end of the bat as you see that sinker going down. He comes in and the ball sort of checks up on him. He thought it was going to bounce higher than what it did. It didn't. It gets by him. It'll go as a double low. The guy didn't score. Twelve hits now. Two doubles, a triple, three homers. So six extra base hits out of the 12 hits they have. This is turning into a hit party for the Cubs. And a long way to go. These don't look like the same two teams we watched last night. Well, it, it's all dictated on the on the, the mound. The Indians got the early lead. They were able to add on throughout, and the Cubs just couldn't score. And right now, that six-run second, boy, it's like a sucker punch. It puts you down under. And then they come back with four and a third. And it's like, okay, thanks for coming. Two balls and a strike. With two on and two out, Bryant, the ninth man to bat in the inning. And he punches one towards shallow right. Moss is there. He'll make the catch and end the inning. 
Four more for the Cubs. They're up 10 0. Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Bottom of the third and for the Indians, Mike Avilas, Jason Kipnis, and Francisco Lindor. Siyoshi Wada with a 10-run cushion to work with. He's already struck out three. He's given up two hits. He's walked a batter. Mike Avilas, the number nine hitter in the tribe lineup. Last year, Siyoshi Wada became the first Japanese-born player to start a game for the Cubs. You know, this guy had a, a respectable career in Japan, not a, I wouldn't say by any means was he a dominant starter, but 107 wins and 61 losses in his career. Very, very solid. Had a 17-win year. Mike Avilas with a routine fly ball to left, one down. But, you know, it makes sense if Theo Epstein, when he was uh, with the Red Sox, you know, they were certainly active. Yeah. In overseas markets. Well, the difference between the Japanese game is they play once a week, you know, the pitch once a week. You know, you get on the grind of this schedule over here in America, and, and to hold up as a starting pitcher and make your 33, 34 starts, not easy for a lot of the, the guys that normally are used to pitching once a week. Boy, and, and, you know, based on some of the numbers we've seen over the years, your scouts – Depending on the team, I know some teams certainly have more flexibility to work with. But if you're going to cough up the kind of dough that, say, Boston did oh, for yeah. for Daisuke Matsuzaka, well, your scouts better be right on the money. Well, they can be, but does he hold up? Does he break down? Does he get hurt? He Daisuke came out. He had a pretty nice career, but he started out great, and then you know when you got to come back and pitch all that time, make all those starts, things start happening. Yeah, he was never, for me, the, the dominant the starter no. that we thought he no. was going to be. Well, it was what half of it was publicity. Sure. I mean, remember how many times we would see them. And granted, we only play the Red Sox a handful of times during the year. But 
You know, he'd kind of run out of steam five, six innings at most. Well, because he would throw so many pitches. Yeah. You Darvish, on the other hand, now that guy can dominate a game, and now he's hurt. You know, he broke down. But he has good stuff. He threw hard. They miss him, those Texas Rangers. They'd like to have him back this year. They're making a little noise, two and a half games behind the Houston Astros. Kipnis with a liner to center right at Dexter Fowler. Probably the hardest ball hit tonight. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al Pulaski. Hey, Matt, Rick, let's check in with the Tigers and Reds. And how about a suicide squeeze in Cincinnati? Eugenio Suarez, successful. That got the Reds their first run. They added another on a home run. It's 2-0 Cincinnati over the Tigers. Matt? All right, thanks, Al. Outside, ball one to Francisco Lindor, who was out on strikes his first time up. And another solid line drive, yeah. but it's right out of Cub Defender. And one of those nights. I think you're right. It's one of those nights, and it's not an Indian's night. Well, head out to Progressive Field Saturday night, and you can celebrate the 20th anniversary of the 95 World Series team. 12,500 fans get a 95 uh, GV Art and Design T-shirt. That's courtesy of Pepsi, and there's also a post-game fireworks show. That's presented by CarMax. Get your tickets at Indians.com. Fourth inning, 10 nothing Chicago. Chris Coughlin, Starlin Castro, and Kyle Schwarber will bat for the Cubs. Ryan Webb misses outside, ball one. Good off speed pitch, yep, one change on one. Up. Coughlin had his season high seven game hitting streak ended last night against the Tribe at Wrigley, but he's bounced right back here tonight with singles in each of his first two at bats, and he's already scored twice. One and two, the count. Ball.
Baltimore again out running early 6 1 over Philly in the fifth. Missed outside. Missed inside with it. And a full count. He didn't go. And it's a leadoff walk. So Coughlin's on safely for the third time tonight. Here's our great clip of the game from last night. Wish we could go back there. Bauer with a line drive single into center field. His first major league hit. And then he went out and pitched a gem. That was like icing on the cake right there, that hit. Seven innings, four hit shutout baseball with yeah. seven strikeouts. He pitched a gem, another seven innings for Bauer. Seventh time he's done that this year. And how about the road ERA for him? Boy, it's something special. A 110 ERA on the road. Lindor short hops it, goes to second for one. Kipnis trying to turn two, couldn't do it. Lindor had a slight bobble. Otherwise, I think they get the double play there. But it was a hard hit ball, and it was an in between hop. And as you say, the key is get one. That's right. You have to get the lead runner. If he fields it cleanly without the bobble, they do get two. But it was a tough hop. He bobbles it, and that allows Castro to beat it out. Strike over the outside corner. Schwarber, bouncer. Urshela goes to Lindor on to Santana, and they turn a double play, and that one goes 5-6-3 in the scorebook. Middle of the fourth. Indians have their work cut out for them. Here's our Lowe's never stop improving note. Michael Brantley 
highest walk to strikeout ratio since 1983. Only Grover. Well, I wouldn't have thought Pete O'Brien would be on that list. Right? Left handed hitting first baseman. And therefore, a strike to Brantley. Down in the dirt. One ball, one strike. Brantley, an infield single, his first time up. Even that was a, a, I guess, a questionable scoring decision. Although I, th you can make the case on Brantley's ball that Castro, the shortstop, had to go. Well, he quite covered, a distance to to get to the ball. He should have made the play. He took his eye off the ball. You could see him. He was looking at first base. The difference between that play and the, the ball that was hit at Santana is Santana took one step. It was, it was right at him almost. Yeah, it was just, it was a short armor. And it's not, we're not, we're not questioning anyone's effort here. We're just saying that, hey, errors happen, but those both appeared to be Misplays. Plays that should have been made. Yeah. Let's put it that way. That's the way it goes. You'll see that all the time in baseball. You'll see plays yeah. that, you know, I think should be made, and other people say, no, that's that's a knock. Well, what are you going to do? Brantley smashes this one to deep center, but what a great jump Dexter Fowler got. He turned his back the to right home way. plate and ran after it, and he got his head turned around and picked up the ball. And actually made it look quite easy. Yeah, he did. Watch where this is a good shot. Watch him turn. He turned around and then looked back the other way. I thought he turned the other way originally, but he did not because it was hit over his left shoulder. He turned and then he had to turn back around, but he did it quickly enough. You get that head back around and it was right in stride. With Carlos Santana coming up, Cubs will put three infielders on the left side. Tell you what, if the lights ever go out here, we won't have any trouble finding Santana. <laughs> He's got Get the fluorescence working. Yes, he does. Strike on the inside corner at the knees, one and two. Oh, I didn't realize he had the laces. Got the fluorescent laces working, too. Did not see that. Yeah. Oh, yep, thank you. One two pitch. And Wada strikes him out. That's number four for the left hander. U.S. Open starts tomorrow. Greatest golfers in the world will be in the Pacific Northwest. Our coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live. On Fox Sports Go. Rolled to short. And Rayburn is thrown out. The Indians go one, two, three, and that's nine in a row set down by Sayoshi Wada.
Northern and Ohio Honda dealers. By the Cleveland Clinic, call for an appointment today. And by the game-changing all-new Ford F-150, the future is tough. We go now to the fifth inning between the Indians and the Chicago Cubs, and it's been all Cubs tonight. Scott Atchison will be the fourth Indians pitcher to work here tonight. He'll face the bottom third of the Cubs order here, Denorfia, Ross, and Russell. All right, let me ask you a question. What's that? We've played, uh, this is game 64 this year. Okay. What do you think instant replay so far this year based on what we saw you know, last season, expanded a little bit more. Overall, where are you on the system right now? Um, I still like replay. I think a lot of times this year the, the the call stands. There's been a number of times where I felt it could have went either way or the other way. And it, when you have a decision, it seems like it favors the umpires for me. You know what I mean? They're, they're not going to overturn a call if it's bang, bang. And mm-hmm. we witnessed that a number of times this year. Well, you're not alone. And what I'm, inter- I'm very interested to hear your thoughts because we're starting to get guys going on the record now. Guys are coming out and publicly stating their unhappiness with the system. Okay. And that's a tremendous play by Urshela. Well Boy, done. Boy, is this kid playing some defense. Wow. Do or die had to come charging in, go to the bare and, hand grab. Not an easy no, play and this, to make here. This is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. He's he's really breaking in at a high speed to bare hand this ball. You see where he caught it in his last two fingers, but he had enough of it to hold on to it and, and throw it across the diamond. And watch how he gets it into his glove and just secures it first. Yes, Boom. to get a feel. That was really nice because he had to break in hard to yeah. make that play. Good play. Really well done. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. No, that's all right. Uh, so Here. first of all, Mike Sosha. Mike yeah. Sosha, there were a couple of calls in a game recently, and he didn't come out guns blazing and blow everybody up, but he said, look, I know it's a work in progress, but things need to evolve as far as how these calls are made because, quote, there is no standard for what is going to overturn a call. It comes down to an individual interpretation, and that's why I think – things are going to eventually have to be addressed. He said, look, things are going to continue to vary as long as you have so many different guys going through the replay center with maybe a different mindset of what should stand, what should be overturned. Very interesting. Now, let's go to Brad Osmus of the Tigers, who was a little more outspoken in terms of, uh, you know, what he feels about the replay system. Osmus, he says, in his opinion, it has regressed this year. And I think, essentially, he's kind of where you were at. He says, quote, I definitely think that instant replay has regressed. I thought for the most part they changed calls in order to get the play right, and they did that on a regular basis. I'm not seeing that this year. Uh, Yeah, and that's my point. But here's another thing I can throw into the ring for you. We don't hear the communication that's going on with the umpires. We never hear it. You know, what, what's going on, why the play is being challenged, or why they overturned the play. What did they see? What did they see? We don't hear that like you do in football, where they at least explain it to mm-hmm. you. Yeah, I think there definitely needs to be some better communication to the fans who are watching games. They want to know. We Players want to know. we got a lot of game left. We'll continue right after this.
Ten nothing Cubs on top. Bottom of the fifth will feature Jan Gomes, Brandon Moss, Giovanni Urshela for the tribe. To sort of continue that conversation, though, that we were having about instant replay, I agree with you. I I like instant replay. I think it's definitely I do too. Uh, been beneficial. But I think like, hey, look, when the NFL started it, it they had it and it went away for a while and then came back. I mean, they got rid of it and brought it back. So nothing's perfect probably first time around. And I think they'll have to to tweak it and they'll have to make yes, some, they do. some changes. But I, I think initially it's been good. But I understand the frustration on the managers and players' parts because we're seeing some of that maybe, you know, the erring on the side of let's be conservative. Whether it's intentional or not, that that appears to be the perception. And I don't think if that perception is out there, it's a good thing necessarily. Well, they should always try to improve, and I'm sure they are, and I'm sure they will. You know, I just want to see people be held a little more accountable. You can't talk to the umpires after the game on a call that's overturned or stands or whatever. They don't talk about it. Why they don't communicate is beyond me. You expect ball players to communicate after a game when there's a situation that happens. They should be held accountable and have to communicate in a situation like that and answer what happened. That's news. That's about the ball game. You can't hide it. You can't run from it. Coming in, the second baseman, Russell, kind of fooled by the awkward swing by Gomes there. <laughs> that's called getting jammed. <laughs> Either that or a gust of wind about 60 just blew in there and knocked that ball down. Watch Russell's reaction at second base. He, he freezes, he goes back, slips, falls, and then, okay. Yeah, and that had some spin to it, too, by the time it bounced up. Well, I, you know, the other thing, too, and this is not, was this was not intended to be a let's beat up on the umpire's discussion. No. There are a lot of really intelligent and charismatic umpires, and I think those guys should be pushed to the forefront. And whether it's just simply a matter of the crew chief is the mouthpiece, but should be somebody in that crew should have the opportunity or the ability to communicate on calls. Some, hate, some are very self-explanatory. We looked at it. The foot hit the bag before the ball was in the glove. Okay, great. But then there are some other calls that aren't as easy to decipher what happened there. What were you looking at? What did you see? And all we need is a simple uh, explanation. Right. Explain it to the people, to so the fans, to the can broadcasters, hear. so we all know. And, and you know what? I think it would relieve a lot of tension between them. Because, you know, with the call stands, why does it stand? You either confirm it or, or you overturn it. I don't get the call stands. I mean, these guys have a tough enough job to make a call, and they are very good at it because we slow it down to super yes. slow motion. They get one look at it, and I'll, i got to tell you something. They do, a, for the most part, a terrific job. And you're going to miss some calls. They're human beings. But, you know, just you you, you got to communicate with it. I think the communication is the big factor. 11 in a row set down by Sayoshi Wada. Giovanni Urshela takes a strike. He grounded to third. He was robbed by his counterpart. Chris Bryan, who made a nice play in the second. Out of play, right side. I still think one of the toughest plays to get right, to get called properly and overturned, is a play at second base where you don't have a camera behind yep. the bag where you get a look at it and you, it's always coming from home plate side going to second and you lose the tag and the foot or the hand going into the base. We've lost it a number of times this yep. year. Yep. For the cameras. 0-2 to Urshela. Out of play. The other thing... In, in addressing the issue of the, the communication issue or letting people know what's going on, the guys who are here, all they're doing is listening to what they're telling them. They're, they're not the ones making the call, so it will be difficult for them to say, well, what they told us in New York was, yeah, you know it. Right. That, again, that, 
something that hopefully they'll be able to work through. I don't know. You've got a, an umpiring crew that rotates through, right? Every, uh, I don't know how often that they do, but it's a crew that goes into New York, and they're looking at, at all the games. Right. Why wouldn't they have set people there all the time instead of a crew? Well, you know, I'm sure that, look, that's something that I know they talked about with the umpires. It was all part of the agreement when they went into this. They want umpires, umpiring umpires, if you will. They want them. They don't want to be overlooked by a third party. Well, maybe. Why don't they just have a, a, a crew or two to do all the games? And they Punched to consistent. right field, and Urshela's got himself a two-out single. So regardless of the score, he's having a fine ball game tonight defensively. And now he has... The Indians' third hit tonight in their first since the first inning. The last hit was Ryan Rayburn's single to left with two outs in the first inning in which Michael Brantley was thrown out at the plate to end the inning. And then right after that play, the Cubs put a six spot up in the yeah. second inning. They went from playing it from in front to down by six. And then Avila rips one foul. Avila's fly to left his only time up in the third inning. And bounces one through the middle. Oh, what a diving stop by Russell. And he throws him out at first. What a play. A sensational stop by the Cubs second baseman who dove up the middle to take a hit away from Avila's. And then at the goal to get up and throw him out. Go back and look at that uh, terrific defense in the fifth inning. Boy, that was on the shortstop side to get up and throw him out at first base. That's a shortstop uh, right there in his own right. They're going to play at second base. That was yeah. a really nice, nice play. Well done. And got him by a solid step. Top of the order for Chicago here in the sixth. Send along a happy birthday wish to George Shaker of Fairview Park, turning 75 today. George, happy birthday. I hope you're still watching. 
Hope we didn't ruin your birthday. <laughs> yeah, right. Dexter Fowler has walked. He has singled. He has struck out. Now he has grounded out. Our in-game recap is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. In that second inning, Cubs just took off. Addison Russell's two-run homer. Anthony Rizzo, two batters later, hit a two-run homer. And then Kristen Orfia in the third and a three-run homer. Sean Markham made it through just two innings tonight. Nick Hagedon faced three batters in the third, charged with three runs. Ryan Webb worked two innings and allowed a run. Now Scott Atchison on has retired all four that he has faced as Anthony Rizzo looks at a strike over the outside corner. Back out of play. One ball, two strikes. Shoots it down on the left side, but out of play. Pitch outside. You may have noticed Roberto Perez has come into the ball game. He's behind the dish. Taking over for Jan Gomes. Swung out and missed. Elevated it. Struck him out. Two down. Well, you can enjoy all the new amenities out here for Kids Fun Day on Sundays out of Progressive Field. Kids, you get to run the bases after the game. You receive a kid's cap courtesy of Cleveland Clinic Children's. Uh, visit Indians.com for all the details. High pop, that'll find the seats. Hit perfectly placed. Chris Bryant with a two out single. Well, looks like Terry Francona going to make a move. 13 game. Yeah, that's right. For, uh, for Bryant. So he's at a 12 and now a 13. So you're right. Hatch is done. After an inning and two thirds. Time out for a pitching change.
Our next game wraps up this four-game home-and-home with the Cubs. Alan Jensen lead off our coverage at 6.30 with Indians Live here at Progressive Field. And Rick and I will bring you all the play-by-play action with Andre at 7 right here on Sports Time Ohio. Two down, a runner at first, Chris Coglin, the batter, and the new pitcher is lefty Mark Zipchinski. 32nd appearance this year. Coglin has reached safely all three times tonight. Two singles, a walk, two runs scored. Two and zero. Rain delay, as you see in the scoreboard there in Cincinnati between the Tigers and the Reds. Zepchinski's missed with all three here to the left-handed hitting Coglin. Oh man, spun him out of there. That's ball four. Time for a Mazda game break. Here's Al. Hey, Matt, you are just talking about that rain delay in Cincinnati. Well, just before that delay, a set we've become all too familiar with. Miguel Cabrera, a three-run homer, puts the Tigers in the lead. Three to two now. Rain delay in the top of the sixth in Cincy. Matt? Wow, so right after the home run, the tarp comes out. St. Louis leading Minnesota 1-0. They're in the fourth inning at Target Field. There for a strike. Pittsburgh is blanking the White Sox 3-0. They're in the fourth inning. They're pro- playing some pretty good baseball right now. The Buccos. Good a chance to see them at the end of our next road trip. Kansas City leading Milwaukee 3-1. They're in the third at Kaufman. 1-1 pitch. And yeah, we'll see Milwaukee before too long as well. Right after the All-Star break. That's not a a two there, two here. No, they come back in August. They come back in August. We go to Cincinnati and then uh, Milwaukee after the break. Zipchinski's missed with six out of seven so far. But he comes back with a strike to even the count on Castro at two and two. The 2-2 broke his bat. Look at the barrel going farther. That was a serious jagged edge. Look at that. He's got the handle in his hand and the barrel just goes flying. The ball's foul. It's not even close to being in fair territory. 
That thing had to be cracked already. The 2-2. Right back to Zipchinski. You know, underhand it, and the inning is over. That'll be against the Detroit Tigers, and 10,000 fans are going to receive a replica 1995 Mike Hargrove jersey, courtesy of KeyBank. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. So, the Grover jersey coming Monday. Top of the order for the Indians here in the sixth. Jason Kipnis riding an 11 game hitting streak coming into tonight's game. He's also hitting 20 straight here at home. He only hit the ball right on the nose in his last at bat, lined out to center field. The Indians were one for eight the first time through the lineup off Wada and one for nine the second time through. And I gave you a stat where there was a 100 point difference. So they. Usually went up to 333 against him, but not today. Right at the second baseman, Russell. Oh, close play. Beats it out. Midfield hit for Kipnis. Just sheer want to right there. Wada had to really hurry to get over to the bag. Russell had to wait on him a little bit. I want to see what Rizzo was doing here. I mean, that ball looks like it's at second base all the way. He started to go after, and he was telling the pitcher to cover, and that's the situation. He took a step or two toward the baseball and made the pitcher try and pick him up. And Kipnis' hustle beats out the play at first base. It gets him a hit. It continues that string. You see, he took a step off and then realized... The stutter step got yeah, him. It really did. Yeah. And that was Rizzo's fault because he said go cover first. And, you know, he, he broke to the baseball. I mean, he broke over that way and sort of slowed down thinking that Rizzo was going to go over there. Kipnis lifted for a pinch runner. I believe that's Zach Walters. Francisco Lindor swinging a miss. But the streak is still alive. 21. Good for Kip.
Yeah, 21 at home and now 12 overall. So only Elvis Andrus with the 27 gamer. That only took him five, six years to get. <laughs> Off the plate, one ball and two strikes. Lindor out on strikes in the first. Lined out to second baseman Addison Russell in the third. And Jerry Davis rings him up on a pitch over the outside corner. Here's our injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Will Myers, the Padres, their troubles continue. And Delano the Shields, the speedster for Texas, goes on the DL. Not the only bad news lately for Toronto. They were on a pretty good tear after winning, what, 10, 11 in a row. They've dropped their last two. Well. Usually when you have a streak going that's that good, the only thing you can do is, you know, the baseball gods aren't with you forever. <laughs> I mean, 11 game streaks, nice. You get all the breaks in the world. Down low on the 1-1 one -one pitch. Just a bit outside, and it's 3-1. and one. Michael's had uh, good counts to hit in all night long. His last at bat had a 3 1 count. He came back and drilled the outside corner with it. Joe Ervis Medina getting loose. Pop to center, and in comes Dexter Fowler. Two away. And we'll bring up Carlos Santana. You were mentioning uh, the Pirates a little while ago, playing yeah. good baseball, winning six in a row, winning tonight again, maybe going to seven straight. Has to be frustrating when you play that well, and then St. Louis has reeled off five straight wins going into tonight. I know. I can't well, make up any ground on the leader. Well, you, you hope to, but you can only be concerned about the way your team plays. And if you win six in a row, then, you know, you got to be happy with yourself. They're going to have many opportunities to play the Cardinals. Well, at least they're not falling behind. If you're not winning, right. then you're, you maybe you're 10 not games losing out. any ground. They're still six back. but Santana punching one towards center. Fowler makes the catch. Six in the books here at Progressive Field. And the Cubs rolling tonight.
Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. We now go to the seventh inning. And defensively, all sorts of changes for the Tribe. Brian Shaw is now in the pitch. Sixth Indians pitcher to work here tonight. Defensively on the infield, Zach Walters takes over for Jason Kipnis at second base. And then in left field, David Murphy replaces Mike Avilas. And Mike Avilas replaces Michael Brantley. Kyle Schwarber, who is two for three on the night, will be the batter. The Middletown Midi getting his first big league hit tonight, first big league RBI, first run scored. Made his debut last night, had one at bat, had Wrigley Field. Saw three pitches. He hammers that ball in the right field. What a night. Let's go down to Andre Nadu who has a story about the Indians bullpen. Yes, a real cool story. We all remember back on June 2nd when Brandon Moss hit his 100th home run back at Kauffman Stadium. And the bullpen presented a ransom note for items they wanted from Apple. Well, Apple retrieved the ball from Moss on June 8th, and they gave all the things that the guys wanted from the ransom note they gave to him. Today, the bullpen turned around, and they presented 12 iPads they purchased to the kids from the Boys and Girls Club to pay it forward. That's what they were looking at. So the Boys and Girls Club here in Cleveland will use the iPads in their learning center, and they were all purchased by the Indians bullpen today to give to them. So after that ransom note, all the way around, they end up taking care of some kids here in Cleveland. A very cool gesture by the bullpen. Very nice. Yeah, I don't think it was intended to originally – where they were going to. It was just it a rain. joke. They were just it was a having joke. a pebble. They ended up it. You know, turning it into something very special yeah. here for the boys yep. and girls clubs, which is uh, very good for the city of Cleveland. And then good job by the bullpen. Chris Denorfi up. Is that a big night? He's driven in four runs, his first home run of the year. And it looked off the bat like it was just going to be a line drive to hit off the maybe the scoreboard in center field. And it. Uh, in the seats before yeah, you get blink. Was a, a vicious line drive down and in. One ball, two strikes. That's where this pitch is, and he smokes a line drive. Boy, that stayed up a long time to get up over the 19-foot wall. Yeah, and as you said, his first home run of the year. It's hard to believe that's the only one he's hit the way he smoked that thing. Hit to third or Shelly going to go to second. There's one. Walters turns a double play. Here's our AT&T U-verse rewind. One of the bright spots tonight has been watching Giovanni or Shella play defense. He's made every play on the diamond. Some routine, some spectacularly. There's a great play right here on the dead sprint. Bear hands it, puts it into his glove, and still gets the out.
At the plate, he's one for two tonight. David Ross cuts and misses, one and one. And now Shaw, one strike away from ending the seventh. You know, Ross came out today after they called up Schwarber, and he went into the ball game last night, and he, he said flat out that kid should be at the big league level playing. But this is the, the backup catcher for Joe Madden right here. And he catches the big lefty. Strikes out here. Ends the inning. The seventh inning stretch is brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Ryan Rayburn going to lead it off. He's one for two with a single. You know, yesterday when we were in Chicago... One of the uh, one of the neat things that we got to see was the Stanley Cup make an appearance yeah. at Wrigley Field, and it wasn't like they just brought the cup out there for a for a cameo. The whole Blackhawks team came and paraded it around the field on the warning track. But I thought it was a a little bit odd as they made their way to the Cubs dugout before going out to the mound to throw out the first pitch. Joe Madden came out of the Cubs dugout, and they handed the, the Stanley Cup to Joe, and he hoisted it above his head. He said he was uh, he was honored that they would, you know, uh, show him that gesture and give him a chance to hold the cup. But I, it, it was it struck me as odd because I know that hockey players are so superstitious about the Stanley Cup, and and there, if you haven't won the cup. You're not supposed to touch so, the Stanley Cup. You can touch it, but you just can't hoist it like that, right? Some guys won't even touch it. Like Take Jeremy Roenick, for example, who played for the Blackhawks, got close, was in the finals, but never won it. He says, I won't even look at the cup if it's if I'm in the same room with it. Really? Yeah, some guys, it just... 
you know, that's just the... Well, they had a good time with it, and that's oh, their third time in six years, yeah. so maybe they're trying to change the trend. Well, maybe they're tired of holding it. You, you hold it. I've been holding <laughs> right. this thing for six years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, it was very cool to see it. I, you know, I mean, there was certainly nothing disrespectful about what Joe did. It just struck me as odd because I know just from hockey players, it's you just don't touch the cup if you haven't won it. Yeah. And, uh, well... And those guys, as you said, uh, the guy throughout the first pitch, Jonathan Taves, man, what a what a run three times. They had the cup sitting right on the mound. Right, right on the mound. There. It was great. Set pitch. it down, threw out, and grabbed it. Took a nice little picture. You know, and, and we were rained out the night of game six in Chicago, and thank heavens we were. <laughs> because when down near Wrigley, there were, what, 30,000? 30, 30,000 revelers. Yeah, and they were partying, and they were having a good time. And, I mean, that would have let out about the same time, the game and that. We yeah, would have never. Had it rained, yeah. We might still be there trying to get out. <laughs> Roberto Perez draws a walk in his only plate appearance tonight with one out here in the seventh inning, and it will bring up Brandon Moss. I just think one of the neat things about the Stanley Cup is that once you win it, your name is engraved yeah. on that trophy. And because they are engraving, if there are any mistakes, they stay that way. <laughs> there have been some misspellings over the me. years. No, nope, out the end of the glove. Castro was there, but he tried to reach out for it. Well, and he's not new to I mean, he's new to this ballpark, and you're running away from a play. Not an easy play when you're going, you know, toward the seats. And he feels, he, he, he senses it. He feels it. It's no yeah. play. It's a tough, tough play to begin with. He gets there. It does. It goes off the letter. And I'll bet uh, the leather, if you ask him, he probably said, I, I, I should have caught it. Yeah, he's upset with himself. You can tell. Well, when you run that far to make a play and you don't, you don't make it, you're upset with yourself. Let's go. Catch it. And the 0-1 Moss fouls it right back. Well, we showed a shot. I don't know where the Blackhawks were sitting, but they had the cup with them during the game last night. Yeah. They were outside somewhere. And I could see the guys checking out all the names the that were on names, it, at whatever yeah. side they were sitting mm -hmm. on in that cup. Moss with a one-hop smash and a backhand wow, play by like Bryant. Goes to second for one. Back to first. Double play. My goodness. That was a tremendous defensive gem turned in by Chicago. Let's see this one again. What's it, five? Bryant, six? the third baseman. Yeah, he goes to yeah. Castro, the shortstop, and on to Rizzo.
authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Wada's night is over. He did a terrific job. Throwing seven shutout innings against the Indians. And the Tribe will go to their seventh different pitcher tonight. And it's Cody Allen who comes on to work here in the eighth inning. Well, you knew it was going to be a big bullpen game when your starter goes two innings. Everybody going to get a little work tonight. Well, I, not that it puts pressure on him, but I'm certain Danny Salazar understands that they're going to want to lean on him to try to get as deep as he can tomorrow now. Addison Russell, one out of three. Two run homer back in the second. There's Basio going through his interpreter. The pitching coach, the handshake, thank you. First for giving me my seven innings, and then thank you for telling him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a good job he did. Breaking ball and a good one. Fastball shoots it back to the screen. Now the one two swung out a miss strikes him out. Good fastball away. Well, yeah, located. It was. yes, it was. And he was a little tardy. Russell was catching up to it. This will be our circle case strikeout tonight. Cody Allen is first batter. Good 95 mile an hour fastball on the outside edge. And Dexter Fowler looks at a fastball at the knees on the outside corner. You know, one of the uh, one of the cool things that the Stanley Cup champions get to do is every guy on a team gets to keep the cup for a 24-hour period. Right. And bring it to his hometown wherever, wherever you want, he goes. Whatever you want yeah. to do, yeah. So would you have taken it over the falls in a barrel? Wow. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I might have just ridden the rapids <laughs> on it or with it. You and Pat and Frankie would have taken it for a <laughs> yeah, ride. I know they would have. <laughs> they would have knocked me out and stole it from me. I've heard crazy story. I mean, guys have uh, had their dogs eat dog food out of the cup. People drink the champagne out of the cup. But I, over Eat the years, someone the had to do damage to it. Oh, it's had its, it's had its list of issues, if you will. I remember one year reading that it uh, it spent the night at the bottom of Mario Lemieux's pool, swimming pool, after a pool party went <laughs> yeah. sideways. The, but the never best, damaged, never uh, you know beaten up or dented or anything like that. Way, way back, like in the early 1900s, I remember a story. I think when Ottawa won it, somebody tried to punt it across the river. No, oh. didn't work. It went sank to the bottom. They had to fish it out. The funniest story, I, I want to say it was the Flyers when they won it. They're on their way to the airport. 
bus got a flat tire. They stopped. Everybody piled out of the bus. They're partying. Fixed the flat, took off, and the cup was sitting there on the side of the road. They had to circle back and go and get it. They left it. Can you imagine that? Well, I wouldn't want to be the person to pick it up on the side of the road with a busload of flyers chasing me. <laughs> because of the Broad it. Street bullies. <laughs> Check swing, foul back. This is Mike Baxter batting for Anthony Rizzo. He got a pinch hit appearance last night as well. Line drive, single in the center field. Well, Mike Baxter, he's done a lot of that for the Cubs this year. Here's our Pat O'Brien Chevrolet play of the game. And this was the capper in the six-run second inning. Anthony Rizzo drops to a knee and hits a majestic two-run homer. That made it six to nothing, and the route was on. Chris Bryant takes a strike, one for four on the night. That one hit extended his hitting streak now to 13 games. He had a 12 game streak earlier in the year. First Cubs rookie with two hit streaks of 12 games since 1928. How about that? Oh, Freddie McGuire. You remember Freddie? Oh, Paul's older brother. <laughs> Paul used to punt him. Yeah. Freddie used to hit him. You should have known you'd go for a Buffalo guy. <laughs> Pitches outside. One and two. Bryant's one of those guys that I think he's bigger than what he looks. I mean, listen at 6'5". He doesn't look that big because he's got that crouch in his batting stance. Right. Uh, he's going to fill out. He's only 23 years old. He is going to be some kind of strong. Not that he isn't already. Yeah, 6'5", 215. There, there have been some players coming out of Las Vegas, haven't there? Harper, this yeah. guy. There's uh, one other guy I'm... I'm Failing to remember that I think played with Harper when he was coming up. Marty Cordova, I think, is who you're thinking of. No, that's, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Rich Corinthian leather. <laughs> we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. All comes tonight.
10-0 Chicago as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. New Cubs pitcher is Yoervis Medina. Came over to the Cubbies from Seattle. We remember him out there. 12 games, 1 0 record, 12 innings, 7 walks. He throws hard. Well, last year he pitched in 66 games yeah, for the Mariners and yeah. had a 268 ERA. Out of Venezuela. Medina was just called up when they put uh, left hander Zach Rosk up on the DL. He was pitching in last night's game and just had a little something twinge in his shoulder. And when they went out, he was pointing to the top of his shoulder. And so at that point, uh -huh. Joe Madden said, That's it, let's get him out of here. And sure enough, he's on the 15 day DL with left shoulder inflammation. Giovanni Urshela, one for two on the night with a base hit back in the fifth. Curveball missed inside. This is the big guy when he's right. He's tough. But he can be a little erratic, and the ball can move around a lot. He can get a little wild. Fastball here right at the shortstop, Castro. One away. Let's go down to Andre. You know, and talking about Medina, when talking to the coaching staff as well as Joe Madden, he said, number one, he was going to get him in the game no matter what today because he said last year he had a killer year, and he wants to see him pitch on this level. He says he's got great stuff, and he last year he was the lights out. So far this year was not the case. But he says his last couple times out down in AAA, he was finally starting to figure it out. He wants him to be a part of this bullpen at some point in time this year, so he wanted to see him out on the mound tonight. Yeah, well, he's – that's a perfect opportunity to go out there and let him go his two innings. He does have a tremendous arm. He's a big dude at 6'3", 245. Oh, that's right. Remember when we were playing Seattle, this is uh, this was the trade, Wellington Castillo. Castillo. But Castillo went back down to uh, Arizona for Trumbo that went up to Seattle. So he didn't stay long there. He did play against us when we were in Seattle. Yeah. Yep. Then we leave, and the next and then thing Trumbo you know. Trumbo played against them when they came here. Yeah, right. So it's all come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> The six degrees of Wellington Castillo. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> the one, two. And a foul back. Might have got a piece of Jerry Davis. Yeah, it sure looks like it because Ross turns right around and protects him. Look at he wears the goggles, the glasses underneath the mask. This one goes into the shoulder. Protection. It misses Ross. It gets Davis. He's all right. That's why you wear the pads. Yeah, absolutely. Well, one hopper to short. Quick release. Two down. Stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care, coming up. Next here on Sports Time Ohio. We're in the bottom of the eighth with two down, and we go to the top of the order, and Zach Walters, who came on after Jason Kipnis extended his hitting streak with a single in the sixth inning.
Swung on and missed. It's one and one. Right at the first baseman, Baxter. Indians go one, two, three. We'll head to the ninth. Ten nothing, Chicago. Has exhausted the bullpen, so he's going to go to Ryan Rayburn. Second career pitching appearance. Last one came two years ago, and he's the last position player to pitch in a game. For he had a drive. strikeout in his inning pitched. I remember Marte. I remember Tim Laker. Look at. I saw Witten, I think, one time strike out the side. He may have given up a run in Oakland. Well, here we go. Chris Coughlin. He's just trying to relax and throw strikes. You sometimes you get up there, you want to hump it up, I'm sure. Rayburn. Wow. Look at Rayburn there. Are you kidding me? Come on, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, give me a little help, pal. <laughs> That's going to bring up Starlin Castro. Good pitch. Comes back there you go. He's on the zone now. Comes back and doubles up on it. Popped up down right field near the line and Moss just couldn't get there. You've got to put the brakes on 
Otherwise, you end up like six rows deep in the crowd. Yeah, you, you can't run it in. That ball slicing away from you. A Ten to nothing game. Slow it down. It's a foul ball. It means absolutely nothing. Hit pretty well. Center field. Avilas on the track. He makes the catch in front of the wall. And that's out number one. Well, Mike there Avilas handled that well. Well, he made a cut deep. Changed his angle. Went back. Catches the ball on the warning track. That's the first out, though. Here's Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber's had three hits on the night. A couple of runs batted in, a couple of runs scored, takes a strike. Up and away. Down in the dirt, two balls and a strike. You know, it may not seem like a big deal, but I know Terry Francona is watching this with a bit of uneasiness because he doesn't want to see Ryan Raven throw a bunch of pitches because if you haven't pitched, it's a different you know, kind of stress on the arm than just airing it out when you're in the outfield. Yeah, yes it is. Three ball, two strike out here on Schwarber. And a foul back. Attack back out of play. We're in the ninth with a runner at first and one out. Nobody left in the bullpen, so Ryan Rayburn trying to finish it off for Cleveland here. Oh, he's going to get a hit here. And Schwarber with a little roller toward third with the shift on. That'll work out for an infield single. So two on, one out. That's four hits for him tonight. Yeah, Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Schwarber, Middletown, Ohio product. First hit was a bit of a generous one by the official score. Then this was legit in the right field. Later in the game, another solid Smash in the right field. Denorfia takes a strike outside corner. It's one and one. Hit down the left field line. Foul ball. Right at the third baseman, Urshela. Two down. 
You know, that's what you hope for when you're out there pitching because you don't have pitches to put them away. You just got to hope they hit it at somebody and they catch it. And there's a perfect example right there. Line drive right at Urshela. He catches it. That's the second out. Ross had to lean back. Ball one. Oh. Two and oh. That look right there kind of said it all, didn't it? Well, he's trying to get that. He may be, his arm may be gassed. I'm telling That's you what, I saw pitches, him trying to flex it. He might not it. be able to get that ball out in front and get it away. You see, I mean, people are booing, but he's thinking his arm's gassed, and, I, I, and it very well could be. Those last two pitches right at the hitter. And that's exactly what Terry's checking out. I mean, they're, they're smiling right here, and it looks like Rayburn is. But he's, uh, that's the last thing he would ever want to do. Look, I've seen it happen. But we remember Jose Look Canseco at, he's, he's blew bringing his elbow. In Murphy. He's we, bringing in the left-hander. Yeah, we've well, seen it happen to. before. You, you know, it's just. Look at Murph. He's going lefty. Now, now what's Rayburn going? Go out to left? No, I don't think so. Well, who's going to left field? Well, if he's taking him out of there, there, uh, there's got to be something wrong with his arm. Well, he was flexing. He was trying to flex it, the forearm. Looked like his forearm might have just been tightening up. All on right, him. Bourne goes out. I got it. Oh, he looks all right. He's smiling there. It's not an easy thing. You think you can just go out there at the major league level and throw strikes and get guys out. Murph's coming in for a save. <laughs> Trying to keep those inherited runners scored. We'll have to put those in the... Uh, Tommy, make sure you put it's, that on the sheet, will It's you? too bad it wasn't a left-handed hitter coming up right that here. That would have been, been beautiful. He pitched against Boston back in 2013. Oh, I thought they said it was Boston. It was Detroit? Was it Boston or Detroit? It was Boston. Okay. So here we go for David Murphy. We're just putting a little twist on interleague play. We're, we're bringing in our pitchers to pitch <laughs> to their hitters. And they have the DH tonight, so. Bourne is in left. David Murphy got uh, ready in a hurry. They had to wait till the time was right till you get to 30 seconds. Oh, right, because we didn't take a commercial break right. there. We, yeah, right. Here's the 2 0. Look Popped at that. him up on one pitch. They call him one pitch Murphy. Lindor lost it. Oh, my. That has been the kind of night it has been. Now, he that's gives, an error on a ball that never got touched. They've never given error on those. That's unbelievable. <laughs> it's been that kind of night. Oh, boy. I mean, should he have caught it? Yes. No question. Look at Murph. No problem. Uh-oh. That's why they took Murph out. He would have been there. He would have caught it. Swing and a miss. So a run scored on that play, and it's 11 to nothing. That's a mere formality.
Addison Russell hit a two run homer back in the second. A little change of pace there from Murph Dog. Yeah, Murph, he's crafty veteran right there. <laughs> Changing the uh, the eye level, the speed, adding, subtracting. That's in the hole and a base hit. Another run scores 12 nothing, Cubs. Well, this is how the night's gone for the Indians because the, they give them the extra out. It's been that way all night. Happened back in the second inning. Twelve runs, seventeen hits for Chicago, and the batter is Dexter Fowler. I'm sorry, I'd have to be calling everything that's close to strike here. I'd be telling the hitter, look, if you don't swing, I'm calling it a yeah, strike. Yeah, well, relatively close. I mean. There's the 2 1. And that sailed high. Three balls and a strike. And a walk loads the bases. We chuckle at the novelty of this situation because it's rare. Believe me, there isn't anything right now that Terry Francona finds remotely humorous about this. He's in a slow burn right now. Mike Baxter. Base hit is only time up. And he hit him. And then I'll drive in another run. Second or a third of the inning. And the ninth man to bat here in the ninth is Chris Bryant. You know, that's funny because it's already happened twice tonight like this tonight, back in the second and the third. He was the ninth man to hit and made the third out of the inning. He has a chance to do it three times tonight here if he does it here in the ninth. This will be the 41st pitch of the inning, and it's fouled off. To center. Back is Avilas. Oh boy. A grand salami. Chris Bryant with a no doubt about it absolute moonshot to straightaway center field. And that caps what has been the ugliest night of the year for the Indians. He's got to be throw strikes, and he smoked it. A seven-run ninth inning for Chicago, and it's 17 to nothing. And Chris Coughlin, who let off the inning with a walk, is the batter.
Back goes Avilas. Onto the track, makes the catch to end the inning. Cubs score seven in the seventh to make it 17 to nothing. Let's uh, take a look back at our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Markham didn't have it tonight. He got bombed in the second. He he was wobbly in the first, but got out of it with a double play. And then the second inning, wheels came off. He allowed six runs, and the route was on. Jason Kipnis did extend his hitting streak. And Michael Brantley had an infield hit, but that was... Uh, that was it. The Indians have just four hits on the night. Chopped up the middle. Lindor hustling down the line, but he's thrown out by Castro, one away. No home runs hit in the game, but the home run challenge continues through Father's Day. You can make your pledge. Go online to homerunchallenge.org. David Murphy. Came on to replace Michael Brantley and ended up pitching in this game. And he sends a fly ball to center field, and there are two down. Carlos Santana will bat with two down in the ninth. Fifteen thousand five hundred seventy two the attendance tonight. Santana trying to get the Indians on the board here in the ninth with one swing. Yo, Eris Medina delivers, and Santana bounces it to first. And the Cubs hand the Indians their worst home shutout loss since July 5th of 1987. 
17 to nothing is the final score here tonight. For that young man, it's a night he'll never forget. Kyle Schwarber, he got his first major league hit, first uh, RBI, first run scored. He didn't stop it at one. He had four of them tonight. Yeah, he sure did. And the Cubs just poured it on from the get-go. They scored six in the second, four in the third, and seven in the ninth when the Indians were essentially out of pitchers. They had Zach McAllister still in the bullpen, but... You got to save somebody, I suppose, for tomorrow. Well, yeah, you got to have a maybe a long man in case something happens. You no, know, it's a ten nothing game, and he's probably thinking, let's just you know see if we can get three outs right. and end this thing, and it just got away from him. I hear you. It didn't work so, out that way. That is going to wrap things up. The less said, the better, I think tonight. <laughs> Not much positive to say after this one. The good news is it only counts as one loss. Tribe will come back and try again tomorrow against the Cubs. Have a good night, everybody.